So welcome everybody and all those listening at home. Welcome. Just want to say a special call out to Jeff in Texas. I know you're listening, Jeff. And to Jim in South Dakota, Mary Beth, Amen. and everybody Hi. who's listening, all you today. Let's say hello to everybody listening. Hello. Whoa, yes, yes. Tell me about three o'clock in the morning. Praise God. Well, they prob- they're not listening live. They're going to be listening, I think they're listening later. In fact, I know they're not listening live. So I heard something this week. It's not new, but it, it's, it just struck me again. It was just really wonderful. It's like we don't make plans and ask the Lord to bless them. We don't make plans and ask the Lord to anoint them. We find out what the Lord's plan is. And we walk in that because it's already anointed. So often we don't need to pray. It's already anointed when we're walking with the Lord in his plans. So i got to tell you, I don't need to pray for an anointing this morning because I know the Lord's anointed me to preach and to speak. I've got a message to share which I hope will encourage you this morning. I want to just... Uh, I ask Lord Jesus that you would open our ears and help us to connect to you, to tune into your voice this morning. Not to my voice, Lord, but what you are saying to us today. I pray that you would speak a word, Lord, that we can hear. It's not you that's not speaking, it's us that's not listening, Lord. Open our ears, open our hearts to hear from you this day, I pray. I'm just going to read from Revelation chapter 6. The book of Revelation. I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, then I heard one of the four living creatures saying, with a voice like thunder, come and see. And I looked, and there before me was a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him. And he went forth, conquering that he might overcome. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, come and see. And then another horse that was red went forth. Power was given to him who sat on it to take peace from the earth, causing people to kill one another. And then a great sword was given to him. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come. I looked, and there was a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And then I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a day's wages and three quarts of barley for a day's wages, and do not harm the oil and the wine. And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the four living creatures saying, the fourth living creature say, come. So I looked, and there was a pale horse. The name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed him. Power overcame a fourth of the earth. Power over a fourth of the earth was given to them. To kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The fourth, four horses of the apocalypse. I just want to talk about this today. Over Christmas, before Christmas, when I was praying for a word for this time, what came to me was make it count. This is a time I believe we we need to make it count. The the Bible says that there there are these four phenomena, these four horses that are being released upon the earth. Many, many interpretations of what this would be. And I cannot say with absolute accuracy, this is what it means, this is what it says, this is what's going to happen in this time scale. But personally... From my own prayer and my own study, and what I feel the Lord is showing me for myself, which is subjective, I tell you the truth. I think we are in this time now, and I do feel that the white horse has passed. I feel that we're entering into the red horse, which is war. Yeah. That we're entering into a season of war and more war, and war is going to continue. And then we're going to enter a time of great poverty. 
of, of lack in the world. And then we're going to enter a time of pestilence and death. So, the time scale for this, I personally believe that we have around about 10 years left in this world. I'm not saying we have 10 years left. I'm not saying we have 30 years or 50 years. We could have 100 years. We could have 120 years. We could, Jesus could come back tomorrow, the show's over. But personally, looking at these this scripture today from Revelation 4, I believe these horses are coming in three and a half year periods of time. And the first one was a worldwide epidemic that came, we're called COVID, and it shook the world, it gripped the world, and it lasted for three and a half years. I know that um, Chickalanti talks about this, and we posted a video about it over Christmas. You may disagree, and that's okay. Personally, I believe that we're entering, we've entered into the second horse, which is the red horse and a time of war. And if these timescales are correct at three and a half years, we have approximately 10 years left. Now, people can be very critical of that. I'm not saying we have definitely got 10 years, but just think if we have about eight to 10 years left, I'm telling you now, scripturally, it is correct to say that Jesus is coming back soon. Jesus is returning very, very soon. And we will be taken out of this world. We will see the Lord coming. And the show will be over. So when I say make it count, I believe we're living in a time where we need to step up and we need to think now is the time to make it count. There is no prayer in heaven. There is no faith in heaven. There is no belief in heaven. We, there, we are there. We, we see the Lord with our physical eyes. Now is the time to make it count. So I want to just suggest a few things to us today. And we have to be cautious and careful with this. And we have to be prayerful. But how are we spending our lives? How are we living? What are we doing with our lives? What plans are we making? Are we making plans for retirement in 30 years' time? Are we making plans for what will happen generationally in the next generation or 100 years? Now, that might still be correct. Even if the Lord is coming back soon, we live positively and we live purposefully. The church has often has sometimes fallen into the trap of thinking, well, the Lord is coming soon. I don't need to invest. I don't need to do this. I don't need to buy a house. I don't need to get married. The key is receiving a word from the Lord and walking in that word for you personally at this time. One of the things that motivates me is that my personal belief is that Jesus is coming back approximately in eight to ten years' time. That's my personal feeling. If I'm right, that's really interesting and significant for our lives and how we live, how we think. So many things no longer are so important to us. Many of us are waiting for things to happen. We're waiting for jobs. We're waiting for finances. We're waiting for health. We're waiting for all kinds of things for the Lord to move in our lives and bring relief and bring resolution and bring help. But just think, you know, if the Lord is coming back so soon, those things don't, don't matter as much. Now, it is God's will and God's purpose to intervene in our life for healing and prosperity. I, I believe that. I preach that. But you know, my personal needs and my personal wants are no longer that significant. What matters is that I'm living for God's kingdom. I'm going for it. I'm absolutely going for it. And I believe the Lord wants to strengthen us and wants to provide everything that we need to do that. When I'm standing up here and I'm preaching, my preaching is a particular style. <laughs> it's not for everyone. The message that I have is, you know, I looked at this message today and I thought, I thought, I actually thought, 
Why can't I just preach a norm, just a, like a nice teaching sermon, you know? But this is what I've got. This is what I felt the Lord give me. I spent a lot of time over Christmas praying. Most days I prayed in tongues an hour a day. And I challenged us before Christmas to do that. I'm not going to say who did it. But I feel the Lord is calling us to a time of prayer. A time to put our phones down. A time to, to, to sit down and pray. Amen. And the whole of hell is going to oppose you in doing that. Our biggest spiritual battle is maintaining a daily meeting with the Lord. It's not fighting demons. It's not, it's not you know, praying, interceding over Manchester. And, uh, this, forget it. If you can't even win the battle in your own closet, your own prayer time, you know, you don't, don't start taking other battles on. But if you win the battle of your prayer time with the Lord, you've won the battle in all other areas of your life. What I'm doing is today, I'll tell you the truth, what I'm doing today is bringing you a cup of water. Every Sunday you come here, I'm giving you cups of water because of my time that I spend with the Lord seeking him. Getting a word from the Lord and bringing it today and giving it to you is a cup of water. But my word to you today is, taste the water, that's fine. But the spring is over there. Mm. Jesus. And my job is to point you to Jesus. Go there and bathe in the water. Drink. Have a wash in it. Just swim in it. It's a, there's an abundance for everybody. And I know that you are doing that. We are drawing from those, the living waters of the Lord Jesus Christ. Coming to church, I'll just challenge you with my own, my own understanding. I've had a long history with the church, a checkered history. This is where I'm up to with the church today. I don't go to church to get anything. I always get something. But I don't go to church to receive. I don't go to church to be encouraged. Absolutely not. <laughs> I don't go to church to, um, to be fed. That's the truth. I don't. I always, I'm always fed. I always receive. I'm always encouraged. But I don't go to church for that. I don't go to church because it's a good church. I get all of that stuff from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. I don't get it from another person. I, I love it when people encourage me. You encourage me. People speak a word to me and they encourage me. Other people try not to, but people encourage me. You encourage me. But whether you encourage me or not, I am encouraged. Because I'm spending time with Jesus. Whether your cup has any water in it or not, really doesn't matter that much to me if you give me a drink i'm blessed but if you don't have anything to give me i'm still blessed because i've been i've been i've been in the well of living water i was there last night i was there this morning i'll be there later today and i'm telling you don't rely upon church to bless you or encourage you or teach you or do anything that's not the purpose i'll tell you what the purpose for me of going to church is the purpose of me going to church is to give, is to bless, is to hug someone, is to speak a word of encouragement, to take them by the hand, yes. to, to, to try to speak a word of correction or speak a word of advice or counsel, to heal somebody. If I'm allowed, I'm allowed at this time, which is such a blessing to be on a microphone at the front to share and to speak. I've endured many years. My last church, I wasn't allowed on, on the microphone. They wouldn't let me preach. It was just amazing. They wanted me to do all kinds of other jobs. And I did them. I was a health and safety officer in the church. Unbelievable. I, I mean, I'm just, I, and I, I don't care about that stuff. I'm not interested. Burn the building down, whatever. I, honestly, and I've never did anything in that job. I tried my best and I couldn't find anything to do. I could never identify any health and safety issues. But I, try, I, I, I tried my best to serve. I played the bass guitar. I, was led up the, I headed up the intercession. I was a trustee. It's crazy. But anyway, today I'm blessed because I'm on a microphone and I have an opportunity to speak. But you can come and you can sit at the back and give to somebody. Just look around. There's always people that need lifting up in church. There's always people that need to be blessed. The purpose for me of going to church is to give. 
And I'll tell you, it's not about enduring a church. If a church is no good, leave. If a church is not the right place for you, go to a place that is right for you. Again, you know, we need to be in the Lord's plan at this time for our life. We haven't got time to mess about. I sat in church in the 1980s, the 1990s, you know, and, and whatever happened, church continued. And I just felt it would in those days. I don't get that impression today. Time is desperately short. And you may come to this church and it may not be meeting your needs. And do you know what? Who cares? Who cares? It's about if this is where you need to be, come to give. We need to change our mindset. And I tell you, I tell you, when I, when I do that, I am blessed. <laughs> I just receive so much from the Lord. I always get encouraged. I'm always blessed. And it's better to give than to receive. How would life change if you realise that you've got just under 10 years left? How would life change? You know, we've got, we've got children. They're not going to make it to, uh, to middle age and, and, and get married and everything. And that's okay because they'll be with us in heaven, man. That's going to be great. If I'm correct, if I'm right, how does that change how we live, how we think, what we're doing with our money, what we're doing with our time? The curse of the church today is world, worldliness. And we are infected. I tell you, all of us, me, we are infected with worldliness. One of the blessings of the Lord is persecutions. You preach a prosperity gospel, they never mention persecutions. It's not true. Persecution is a blessing from the Lord. I said it before, we met um, Brother Yun, from heaven, the heavenly man from China, and... He was part of the underground church. He was terribly, terribly um, beaten and tortured in prison for being a Christian. And he endured terrible suffering. And he, he was telling stories about other people in China who suffered shocking, terrible things. And when the, when the Christian leaders in, the, in, in Europe were meeting with these leaders from the underground church in China... They ended and they said, what can we do for you? How can we pray? Tell us how to pray. We'll go home and we'll pray for you. And all they said was, whatever you do, do not pray the persecution stops. And the leaders, the European leaders were like, what? They said, do not pray the persecution stops. The persecution we have is a blessing upon us because it motivates us. It drives us to Jesus and it drives out all the worldliness from us. Because going to one of those meetings in China could mean that you were taken away from your family, put in prison, beaten. Brother Yun, Brother Yun was put in a prison cell. Guards came in with hammers and smashed his legs. All the bones in his legs were broken so he couldn't walk and escape. Terrible things. People were taken from their families. Their children were taken from them. Just for going to a, church, a Christian church meeting. But he said when you went to those meetings... The presence of the Lord was unbelievable. The worship would just would change your life. It was incredible, amazing. And we've lost, we don't have that. I tell you that, I believe that's a part of our prosperity, a part of our blessing. And we don't have it. And it's hard for us. It's hard for us to be motivated. We're surrounded by screens, by phones, by TVs. You've got the battle with yourself, then you've got the battle with everyone else in the house. It's really hard. It's really hard. And in a funny kind of way, if all that was taken from us, we'd realise, oh my gosh, yes, now I choose. Do I follow Jesus or not? And if we follow Jesus, there's consequences physically. But so many blessings, it's incredible. I'm not preaching what I've what I laid, out to, laid out to preach here at all. Let me just read this. Matthew 24, 37. As with the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. You see, 
What I'm doing today is speculating or saying my personal opinion about when the Lord is coming back. I think, it's, I think we're in the last decade. I think we're in the last 10 years. Jesus encouraged this type of thinking. He said, look for the signs. When you see certain things happening in the world, you know the time is coming when I'm coming back. So he encouraged us to think like this. As with the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Two will be in a field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord will come. Before the flood came, the ark, the door, God shut the door on the ark, it was closed, no one else could enter, and then the floods came. The earth broke open, rain, huge cataclysmic floods came and everybody was destroyed but until that moment they were eating and drinking they were marrying and getting married society was just flourishing and continuing as in those days today is the same we've got our jobs we've got our tv yeah. you know i'm gonna go home today it's a football oh. match manchester oh. city are playing I get excited about that. It's just like, it's, we've got to start to get things in perspective though. Jesus is coming back. We're living our lives. We go to school. We go to work. We have plans. We're getting married. We're, children are being born. You know, there's, and these are all blessings. These are good things. But in such a time as that, suddenly the show will be over. Whatever your belief is, your interpretation a rapture is coming and the church will be taken out. Suddenly, other things will begin to be unleashed upon the world. Amazing things. I remember Rebecca Brown was talking about a prophecy that was given in the year 2000. And she said that, she said that terrible war is coming. Terrible, terrible war is coming. The word was to go to stand in the midst of the, young, of the young people. This is in America. And the Lord said, because they will all be killed in war. War is coming, terrible war. What's going to happen? If, a, if there's a, a nuclear explosion, suddenly everything changes. The whole of our perspective changes. In that moment, what are you going to do? Start to seek the Lord? Start to pray? I would say invest now in your relationship with Jesus, that you will be strong and secure that you will have already won the battles and dealt with the flesh, dealt with those issues in your life. The church is plagued with worldliness. What goes on in our mind, what plays out in our mind. You know, I talk about a lot of these things in, the, in, the, in my book. This book that's coming out is really hard hitting. I'm telling you, it's really, there's no holds barred. And I just want to encourage you all to read it. And I just want to say, when, that we really have to consider these things deeply. If we have sin, active sin in our lives, we've got to deal with that. Not because we'll lose out on salvation, but because it's going to hinder our relationship with the Lord and the development of our relationship, of our ability to trust in him, to know him, to hear his voice. We need those things so that we will be strong in the coming troubles. Not only strong, but we will be a people we're called to heal the sick. We're not doing it, guys. We're called to heal the sick. We're called to have a prophetic word for those around us. I think maybe the Lord has given you prophetic words over Christmas. And I want to give an opportunity in a minute for you to come forward and to share those words. I know if you've been seeking the Lord and praying, in particular as I encourage you to do, to pray in tongues for one hour a day, 
<laughs> then, I mean, even saying that, it just sounds crazy. It's like, it just sounds mad. But we can do that. We can do it. It's like there's so many different things in our life um, and we need to make the decision and to simply do it. And if we've been doing that, the Lord will be speaking to us. The Lord has been speaking to us, but we aren't always hearing it. So, <clears throat> I just want to close there, really. Just to say, make it count. Make this time count. 2024, make it count. Who knows what's going to happen in the world in this year? Make it count. You have needs, you have wants, you have desires. And you know what? Maybe they're not going to be met. Not because God isn't willing to do it and has the power, but because we're just not receiving it. And you know, we can do something about that. I believe God wants to bless us. He wants to heal us. He wants to move, transform our lives. Amen. But if, he, if we don't receive that, whatever. It doesn't, it's not a deal breaker. If you're feeling down, it's not a deal breaker. Just ignore it. Start to serve. Bless others. Give. Become Amen. a giver. Mm. And you know, sometimes doing that is the key to transformation on, in our own lives. Amen. Praise God. I just want to give opportunity now for, because I feel like it will be the case that you have, the Lord has been speaking to you. I'm not, I'm not saying... Men provide for his glory, for his name. Uh, there was a lot of praise every morning, every night. Lord, when you want me to start, what do you want me to do? Because since from when I left that old church, I lost like um, direction. I lost uh, my purpose, what to do. Because everything was like fulfilled in the past time. And I was feel like a little bit empty. Now, the Lord God, once, when I was been in this church, he showed me prison bars. And what does that mean? Before when I come in this country, uh, they put me through immigration system to jail. And people is coming from churches and serving us in that time. Um, because that time I just come in to recognize the Lord. I didn't know nothing about Lord God. I didn't know nothing about Bible that time. Uh, that was a very, very key process for me. That was the moment when I took the Bible first time and I started reading because one of my friends, that time was not my friend. That time I didn't know who is, but through the, the, that uh, place where we was, we we introduced ourselves. We recognized we are from same place like Czech Republic, where I come from. And he said, Mark, if you want to step out from jail or from prison or wherever I was, read this and give me Bible to help. And I was looking on it very, very silly way. And I was thinking in my mind, oh my gosh, how these can take me out. But in the same thing, my second thought was, you know what, you have a time. You never read the Bible. You know something about Adam and Eve. You know something about Abraham. But you never know how supposed to end all these story. So now you have a time, why not read it? So that was in the um, microseconds in my mind. So I just took the Bible and I started reading. And when I was starting reading, that was amazing stories. I never know the Bible is so poetic or so interesting about stories of Jew history, you know. But because before I was still out, the first thought when I take the Bible, I turn it from the backside, and I will start reading like a great dragon was flying through the sky and was looking for a virgin to swallow her or stuff like this. And my first thought about this was, wow, this is Bible. It's a great horror what I read. 
Oh, I want to read that if it's horror like this. It's better than Dracula. So I was turn it and I start from Adam. And like I say, I was not like to stop. I was ready to read it. Maybe in maybe in two, three weeks I was ready to read it all. But then my friend is coming back and begging me and begging me, give me that back, please. I need to read. I need to read. And I was saying, no, 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 give, give me a little bit more time. So that was like two, three days. And then I was feel bad convinced, so I give it to him back. And we make a deal. You know, and I go out, he said, I will give it to you because that Bible was from a prison library. Yeah. So, and what's happened, I was thinking, oh, when they, when he will be released, that will be, oh, so long. So I was doubt, like he will be released. But after two, three days, he was gone. And he just come into me, Mark, this is our part of deal. This is the Bible. I know the handing back to the library. I give it to you straight away. So this is how the Bible is coming to my hand. And I start reading it and reading it. And I was kind of stopped because my soul was so dry, so empty. And that was the right food for my soul to start read. Now, after many years, I was thinking, maybe I should go to serve people like, like I was, you know, that time. Because they come into us like every Sunday or every fortnight. <coughs> And they start preaching or or whatever they done with us. They was talking about God. And that time was uh, for me just such a blessed time. Like you saying, you know, when when those people from China or different places they asking you, don't pray like this way to take out of prison and stuff like this. <laughs> That was the moment in suffer time, in the darkness time, when I start open my mind, open my heart, why I was sick and why is happened all these things to me. So these people were serving us. And when I was start coming to this church, just prison bars is appear on my vision. I was thinking, wow, is that what you want me to do? And I was I was scared to be honest again. I was saying, oh, I'm not ready to go and preach to someone like drug dealer or, or maybe raper or something else to preach him about God. Ooh, I'm not equipped for that. But this is what is coming to me again and again. And I, I had to fulfill even if I like it or not. And in this moment, I will uh, like to challenge my brother Paul. Uh, do you remember you said you got some people who already serving in this business? Please, I remind you, contact me with them so I can step in as well, so I can be part, so I can serve my Lord. Thank you very much indeed. That's all from me. Be blessed. If that's what the Lord is saying, do it. Just do it. So I already shared uh, the visions and the words for my family and for myself on um, our Zoom service the other day. So I shared the uh, uh, words uh, for our church as well, but I think I um, I'm sharing this again with you. So, Alan, would you read Romans 13, 14? Uh, that's the word uh, given by God for our church this year. Romans 13, 14. Romans 13, verse 14. <clears throat> but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Thank you. 
So um, put on uh, Jesus Christ on ourselves. So I'm wearing this spiritually. Um, God is telling us that we need to wear Jesus Christ. Um, I may I meditate on 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 the meaning of clothing Jesus Christ. Um, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Is the Word. Amen. Became flesh. Glory to God. So the, the, when I meditated on this verse, I uh, God gave me the visions of um, the Word and flesh. So God created this universe with His Word. So the Word is everywhere. We need to clothe the Word. So our center should be the Word. And flesh means is so the Word materialized in this world two thousand years ago. And God wants us his word to be materialized in our church, in our church and in our church members. So I bless you guys, Jesus Christ, to be materialized in your life, 2024. And then the, the next one is we do not pursue the desire of our flesh. So in order for us not to pursue our own desire, We need to know whether our thoughts and desires are coming from God or coming from our flesh. So I challenge you guys for this year, in everything you do, in every emotion you have, feelings, thoughts, prayers, even prayers, I challenge you guys to ask God first whether this is coming from him or from me. Amen. Thank you, guys. Amen. Absolutely. Crucial word. So, guys, listen. You know, I see on, on the church, I see... I'm not talking about this church. I'm talking about the church here in this country. I see a weariness, I see a tiredness, I see um, a confusion and a wandering around. We need to stop, we need to be focused. I mean, we need to get up to speed. There isn't the time to mess about. It's so easy to lose a decade. We can't do that, we haven't got the time. Now is the time to press into the Lord. Now is the time to deal with the flesh. That The, we, the, the flesh is there to serve us, it doesn't rule us. And there are things throughout the church where the church is being absolutely ruled because we've clothed ourselves in the flesh, the things of the world, our, the lust of the flesh, the uncleanness of the mind, many different things, our attitudes towards food and drink and whatever, it, whatever else it would be, entertainment, pleasure. We've got to deal with these things, guys. We haven't got time. Yes. I think I'd like to support Alan in what he was saying before. Um, can I, I'm just going to read, okay? So please, please listen to the words. I know when people read, it's time to go to sleep. And sometimes, <clears throat> if, you just, if you just bear with me. The Bible does not use the phrase one world government or one world currency in referring to the end times. It does, however, provide ample evidence to enable us to draw the conclusion that both will exist under the rule of the Antichrist in the very last days. In his apocalyptic vision in the book of Revelation, which is the last book in the New Testament, the Apostle John 
excuse me, the Apostle John sees the beast whom we identify as the Antichrist rising out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns. Comparing this vision to Daniel's similar one in Daniel 7, 16 to 24, we can conclude that some sort of world governance system will be inaugurated by the beast, the most powerful horn who will wage war against God's holy people and conquer them, Revelation 13, 7. The Ten Nation Confederacy is also seen in the statue of Daniel 2, 41 to 42, where the final world government consists of ten entities represented by the statue's ten toes. Whoever the ten nations are and however they come to unite, scripture is clear that the beast will subdue three of them, Daniel 7 verse 8, and the rest will do his bidding. John describes the ruler of this vast empire as having power and great authority given to him by Satan himself, mm. Revelation 13.2. The ruler receives worship from all of the world, Revelation 13, 3, 4, and will have authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. This person will truly be the leader of a one world government that is recognized as sovereign over all other governments. We see nations today willing to give up some of their sovereignty to combat climate change, it's easy to imagine that the disasters and plagues described in Revelation 6 to 11 would create such a monumental crisis that the nations of the world will embrace anything and anyone who promises a solution. The reason I've read that today is I don't know how many people in this room you don't have to put your hands up, I'm not after that. How many people in this room have heard of an organisation called the World Health Organisation, WHO? And again, you don't have to put your hands up. In the last month, 182 nations signed up to the WHO, giving them complete and utter authority over every one of those nations when there's the next pandemic. That means that our government have no control over us or what happens to us, what's offered to us, what we have to do, where we can go. All our liberties will be subject to a one world health organization. And many things like that are going on at the moment. And we don't, why don't we hear about them? When we were younger in the 70s and 80s, I'm pretty sure most things were on the news and we heard them. What you're hearing on the news now is what these people want you to hear. Right. My last thing I'm going to say to you today is I would encourage all of you, you can still watch ITV News, you can still watch BBC News, start trying to find out what's really going on by looking to other sources that are all over the internet. There are private people who are now telling you what's really going on, but it's up to us to search it out, otherwise we're just walking into it blind. And that, that's what the devil wants. He wants us to be blinded. He wants us to be deaf so that he can put into plan everything he's got in place for us. Amen. Amen. Um, has anyone else got a word? Has anyone else got a word? If you're feeling shy or nervous or you're not sure whether to share it, that's just pure selfishness. Repent of it. Come forward. If you've got low self-esteem, if you've got low self-esteem, Repent. Repent. <laughs> no, this is very short and sweet, actually. It's, I don't get this problem very often. Uh, only when you two are around. This is very short and sweet. I, um, a few months ago, I was, oh, for all last year, really, I was really praying to God. I wanted to hear his voice clearly, you know, and that why, you know, how do I know when, I'm re when it's really from you? And um, I, I was just laying in bed one morning and being a bit self-absorbed and worrying about my own greed, needs, whatever. And very clearly, again, out of nowhere, I heard 
take your attention away from you and put it on me. Wow. That was it. That was it. Just plain and simple. Stop putting your attention on you and put it on me. Amen. And that was it. I just thought, wow, you know. Yeah. Amen. That was it. Amazing. I think that should have been a sermon today, though. Yeah. <laughs> Any more? Anyone else? Zakaya, you got a word? You just put your hand up, man. <laughs> okay. Is that it? One more? I have absolutely no idea what the Lord wants me to say after that sermon, but... Um, I'm standing here, literally waiting to hear. So I'm, I'm just going to say, as Alan often says, the first thing that comes into your head when you're, you're looking to hear from the Lord and and pass on positive blessing in prophecy to your brothers and sisters listening now and whenever it is. The Lord says, I am coming soon. I am coming very soon. And this is me speaking now. I've known this since the 1st of July 2017. I've personally known that. And I'm actually surprised that we're all still here. I really am. Because I actually thought that when he told me that, we were talking a few years. And already nearly seven years, you know, six and a half, seven years ongoing. And, and I think what Alan said about the 10 years is likely to be correct. So I'm going to go back to just listening to what the Lord wants me to say. My windows of heaven are open. But you have keys. And some of you are not using them. You have keys. My windows of heaven of blessing are open to you. So use the keys. Receive the blessing, because there's nothing more I need to do in that respect. In these last days, signs and wonders will accompany you if you do that. Some of you think that maybe time is short and you don't have time to study my word in enough detail I can as Marek said in a very short space of time through my Holy Spirit enable you to do the acts that my apostles did in the days of Jesus and just after in my first church which was known as the way I am the way, the truth, and the life. Rest in me. Discard the spirit of despair in favor of praise. Put down the garment of heaviness that the world will press on you by its nature and replace it with a garment of praise to me. I am your protector. I am your healer. I am mighty God. I'm reading this in front of me. Jesus is my son, his counsellor, prince of peace. And I heard this the other day, so I'm going to say it again. The government will be upon his shoulders no matter what the world does no matter what the antichrist does the word antichrist begins with the syllable ant he is to me elohim yahweh an ant i will crush him as my word says do not be afraid of him do not be afraid of beast system. Do not be afraid of all the violence and destruction 
in Revelation because you are my people and I am preserving you through this. Bless God, I think that's it. I feel that Pablo, honestly, the Holy Spirit came back to speaking, and I just want to lift up my voice to give him all the glory, all the praise. And I have to say my words first for this church, it was Psalm 121, that if you go through anything, and I speak to myself as well, just lift up your eyes onto the hill where your help comes from, because your help and my help come from the Lord, who creates you, who creates heaven and the earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High. What a mighty God we have. What a mighty God is a privilege to serve Him. And everything will be possible. God speak to us. Because when you ask, like Jackie said, He did. He comes sometime when He gives an answer. Sometimes I don't know what He means. But it's very simple answer. Take your eyes down from the wall and just leave it at me and you will see in a couple of days or I don't know when what I was trying to tell you why you should take your eyes down from this wall and leave it at me. Because I know your future. Your future is in his hands. He knows your circumstances because he is in his hands. And if you need anything finance, it will come. And then Holy Spirit will remind you this is your answer. When you get in it, when you honestly will know through your spirit and through your flesh, then he will come again and he will confirm that your answer. Because you did, you take your eyes down from the world and from the flesh and you put your eyes on for me. This is your reward. And you, sometimes I don't know how to thank him, how to go to my knees and how so much to say, thank you, Jesus. Sometimes you don't have words how to say, thank you, Jesus. Because when you do something, it's hard to overwhelm you. He is a powerful God. He is your mother. He is your father. And when your children need a lack on something, you will go extra mile to give them even what you don't have. And this is your God. We are created by his image. And this is him even more than we can do for our children. I don't have that much power for him only to die. And he did it. So to God be the glory for that kind of loving power what he has. We worship him this morning and we give him all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God.